service. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come. We love the Lord God, that you are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. Thank you, Father God, for watching over us all last night and allowing us to get up and wake up this morning. Father God, we pray that you watch over us throughout this day, God. Bless your service. Bless the one that's here and the one that's on their way, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank God.
Heavenly Father, just thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. You didn't have to do it, Lord, but I'm glad you did. Heavenly Father, you've been so good to us through the week. Through the cold, through the rain, Lord. You were there in control of everything. Heavenly Father, bless those that are here and their families, Lord. Heavenly Father, bless those that are sick, Lord, unable to get out of their bed. But Heavenly Father, they might not get out of their bed, but they can call your name. Yeah, yeah. Heavenly Father, your name is precious, Lord. Yeah. All they got to do is call your name. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for my health and strength, Lord. Thank you for my family. Yeah. Heavenly Father, look upon those that's in the hospitals, Lord. Yeah. Look upon those in the nursing home. Yeah. Heavenly Father, look upon our pastor and his family. Yeah. Look upon our deacon board and our ushers, Lord. Yeah. Heavenly Father, our deaconess and our choirs and our musicians, Lord. Heavenly Father, keep them healthy, Lord. Yes. Heavenly Father, bless their families. You know you can make a way out of no way, Lord. Yes. Heavenly Father, look up on the Ford family, Lord. Bless them and take care and comfort them, Lord. Heavenly Father, only you can. Look up on Minister Perkins, Lord, and his family, Lord. Yes. Heavenly Father, you know you're in control of everything. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, because you didn't have to do it, but I'm glad you did, Lord. Help me fall up and down the dangerous highway, Lord. Help me fall. I know that you was in control, Lord. Thank you for protecting us from sin and us in danger. Help me fall. You've been so good to us, Lord. Help me fall. We was able to get up this morning, put on our own clothes, Lord. Feed our own self, Lord. Drive to the house of prayer. So many, Lord. So many have passed. So many can't do that, Lord. Heavenly Father, bless us right now. And Heavenly Father, when time is getting near, Lord, but I can't pray no more, Lord. To go to my room, Heavenly Father, just to call your name. I know it's a better home somewhere, Lord, that you prepared for us. These are blessings I ask in your season. Thank you. Amen.
has blessed us to come together one more time. And uh, even though it's a little chill, we ought to be looking for a three. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Y'all want me to say that one more time? We all got it. Uh, even though it's a little chill, we ought to be looking for a three. Amen. Now, we're not talking about that three of old BB we're talking about back in the day. He said it was all gone. We're going to say it's here to stay, okay? <laughs> Amen. God bless you as we read ourselves to bless God uh, in our giving. We never want to forget him uh, who has given unto us. And uh, you all heard us say on the first Sunday uh, that the Lord needs more. Where? Amen. One of the three or four people here. The Lord needs more and what? God bless you. Uh, so we have an extra offering to give today that's been up here in the pulpit for about three or four weeks. It's going on the table today. Say good morning to everyone. We're certainly grateful to God for being here this morning. And I think most of us can say that all we've been through the last week, you allowed us to assemble ourselves once again. And we just like to ask you to observe the following announcement. Let us start. Forget the next one program will be here at the church this Saturday at 11 o'clock a.m. And we ask parents, please bring out your children, grandchildren, and nieces, nephews. Dinah McCray has a great work going on here, and we're just asking all of us to come out and support him. Again, that's this Saturday on the January 27th at 11 a.m. Let us simply keep Jackie and the Ford family in prayer. We all know that Dick Ford passed away uh, this week. And we certainly pray for them. We've uh, been uh, arranged. This has not been completely set yet, but we're certainly trying to make sure it's on the board outside, just in case. For our visitors who are here with us this morning, we thank you for coming. You're always invited back to the Zion Traveling Baptist Church. Thank you. Amen. All right, let's, let's make sure we hold up uh, our preacher, uh, Minister Perkins. Uh, he is certainly in need of as much prayer as we can get through to God. Uh, we want to do that. You know, the Lord said me out to always pray. I want you to continue to keep him before God uh, because he certainly needs it. Uh, let's pray for his wife and siblings and family uh, in his hour. Uh, let me uh, pay homage and thanks uh, to the Lord for the Dalton family uh, who gave out the throwables. I believe that's what you call them. Y'all give it up for Mama Dalton and, and, and Sandra and Robin. We thank them for what they have given us and uh, maybe use them to honor and go ahead and tell you to the said, Thank you for the Dalton Lord. <laughs> Amen. God bless your hearts and pray for us. The wife and I will be leaving here, uh, going to Memphis. I know the weather is not the best, but uh, God is still in control. Uh, so just pray for us. We'll be leaving this evening. I'm just going to cut the trip short for the young lady. Stop off and spend the night outside of Jackson. Then get up in the morning take on where we go, okay? <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Thank you, choir. Thank you, brother musicians, and, and all of you that have come here this morning. And may we come today with the mindset that I come to worship the Lord who woke me up this morning. Amen. That's, that's something that we can praise and thank God uh, for as we go through this day. And all the days that God give us, uh, don't take them for granted. Don't take them for granted. Every day, every day, and I've learned since since number seven to that every day is an extension. We are giving that an extension. Thank you all for the extension because it did not have to be. And 
We got some of these folk in here, one, 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 one of them members passed by me this day, you know, today said, boy, you never cooled the way you threw that cap to a bug. I said, Lord, I had to tell my little D, I said, that's somebody watching everything. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Come on, let's give it up for the choir that blesses us.
our hearts today. Uh, we're going to do a verse or two. Father, stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, whether shall I go? And we certainly thank God for the choir and their songs today. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for them. God, I stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know. Thou would call thyself from me. Thus said the Lord unto you, 
be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. But the battle is not yours. But whose? But God. Amen. God bless your heart. Father, thank you today that the battle is not ours, but it's yours. And we're looking to you, oh God, the undefeated general of the army, of the believers in Christ. That's you. And God, you always see fit to bring us out of wherever we in through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray you have your way in us and through us this day. And we set forth, thus saith the Lord. It's in Jesus' name. And for his sake we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Now, again, the latter part of verse 12 says, Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And we want to talk today from this thought, what to do when you don't know what to do. Then we get that. What to do when we don't know what to do. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord has brought us together one more time. This third Sunday in the month of January 20 and 24. And he has brought us to one of the great books of the Bible. In fact, this will be just my second sermon in my ministry being preached from this great book of Second Chronicles. Everybody knows 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. But here, my friend, we can still see God in the picture of doing what he does best and that he'll make a way somehow. Amen. This book of Second Chronicles concerning all my friends that are in Christ who can know what God did yesterday, he can still do today and forevermore. Here before us, we have King Jehoshaphat, who was the king of the southern kingdom. You see, there was the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom consisted of ten tribes, and the southern kingdom consisted of two. And here, Jeroboam, my dear brothers and sisters, who was the son of Asa, whom he succeeded. That was, my dear folk, his dad's name was Asa. And Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he came to the throne. And he reigned 25 years in Jerusalem. Now, lack father, lack son was the picture we have recorded of Asa and Jehoshaphat who both trusted in the Lord. Now, the father and son, they were bright lights against the dark paganism that existed in their time. Both of them had certain weaknesses, but their faith in the Lord brought them good, my friend, as well as God's people during their reign. Now, in our text today, Jehoshaphat showed a willingness to rely on the Lord. Yeah. Just suppose that our leadership, our political brothers and sisters who are in authority, suppose they would just only rely on the Lord. Yeah. Maybe they rely, they wouldn't do so much lying. Yeah. In a time of danger, Jehoshaphat did what every child of the Most High God should do, which is pray. For God's help. Right. My dear one, when we get to an impasse, that is a situation where there seems to be no progress in sight, may we not let alcohol or drugs be the solution to our problem. Yeah. But no without a doubt in whom our dependence is on. Yeah. Can, it, can someone tell me what did alcohol do for you when you got depressed? What did the drugs do for you when they got depressed? Right. Y'all going to talk back a little bit? Right. They couldn't do for you what the Lord does for you. Amen. 
No, 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 my friend. I can tell you that right now. And we ought to follow the lead of the prophet Jeremiah who said these were, Oh, Lord, I know that the way a man is is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. That is why we should not look to, why would we rather look to a man who cannot even move himself? Cannot direct himself. Can't make one step without God. Why do we look to someone like that who we believe sometimes, I believe we think there's a more than one God. Y'all heard what I'm saying? Because we act like some of these folk who come against us is God. I don't care who it is, it's only one folk. You can call yourself anything you want to call yourself, but there's only one true God. And he's the one that we have our trust in. Because as Paul told those Epicureans and those Athenians on Mars Hill, it's in him that is the Lord that we live, that we move, and that we have our being. Now what Jeremiah quoted, followed by what Paul quotes, of the basis of why we have the son of old, we said, without God, I could do nothing. Without God, I would fail. Without him, my life would be just like a ship without a sail. And the son went on saying, I'm leaning and I'm depending on Jesus, for I know he never failed. Then I can also hear one of them old sisters saying, I learned how to leave and depend on him. He's my friend. And he's my guy. I learned how to lean and depend on him. My dear folk, today we can depend as well as rely on our Lord Jesus. May each of us not, my friend, that we're not, no brother, that we're not the first to have to go through something and we won't be the last one. Okay? Trouble is a part of our makeup. There's nothing we can do about the trouble. Because, number one, we were born in trouble. And as long as we live, we're going to have some trouble. That's why the song said, but it won't last always. Y'all get me? It's coming, but it's also going. We are on the best team, folks. Do you all not know you're on the best team? You say, well, I, I, I don't play for the water down. I don't play for the... The Packers of the New Orleans Saints of the Lord have mercy the Houston Texans. But can I tell you, you ought to be on the team, my friend, that never lose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Look, I don't be always called the right play. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You always call the right play, and you don't have to worry about him being intercepted. Yeah. You don't have to worry about him fumbling. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's what you would have needed like him. In God yes, is the one that is undefeated. And he wants us to know I'm the best leader yes. that we can follow from earth to bright glory. And never fret. Because our God has never failed us yes. yet. He said he'll be there. There's no need to worry because God never failed. Now, during the reign here of King Jehoshaphat, Judah was faced with an invasion by an allied army of the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, and the late great grandma of said, and the electric lights. They had. they had all of these lights that were in opposition to them. Now, what were the Jewish people to do? You got all these armies coming against you. Look, look for this triune army of the three I just mentioned. They appear to have a greater fighting force. Yes, and they yes. had, my friend, what you would call superior arms in that day. All right. Also seen opposition. Look what King Jehoshaphat did. My friend, he proclaimed the fast. Y'all right. do know oh, that's what we need to start doing more of. We need to get more into fasting. I wonder, I'm not going to ask anybody to raise their hand, but when was the last time you did fast? All right, all right, 
Uh, you know, the Bible said these kind come about fasting and praying. And so let's get into the fasting and praying business. I know we do pray. I know I pray. But all of us can do more fasting. And you will not die from fasting and praying. Oh, I can make them without having some bacon. Hey, good morning. There's some grits. There's some eggs. I don't know if I can make it, grits. Oh, Lord, what were you doing before you got home to the bacon and eggs? Say that. Just got to where you can afford to buy a little bit. Now, and now it's, it's, it's going on up higher. But you know, I mean, some of y'all gonna say, I don't care where it go, preacher. I'm gonna be like that old man you always talk about who said I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat ham if the side don't have a pig. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible folks, it's about us knowing what we have in God. And God says, the Hashemite called for fast and prayer, and so should we, the church of the living God. Look what he did, folks. He gathered the people together for prayer, which is the greatest thing we as the children of the Most High God must and should do. Now, in a nutshell, the king, he sought the Lord. He reminded the Lord that the Jews were his covenant people. Now, forget this word. The Lord don't mind us reminding him of who he is and what he can do. Listen, folks, understand this here, that God wants us to know that we're his children and his children ought to know that he's our God and that God, I know you won't forget about me. Yes, 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 but the yes. question is, will we forget about him? Huh? He won't forget us and neither should we forget him. You see, the temple where Jehoshaphat was praying was God's sanctuary. And the place where he promised to hear and answer prayer. There's nothing wrong with coming to the house of the Lord with a mind on Jesus. And if you have a mind on Jesus, you have a mind of praying. He was the savior of the world, but he prayed at some time all night long for. So we need to pray. Now, the last statement in King Jehoshaphat's prayer. In verse 12, he said again, Our God, would thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. My he God. said, Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Yes, now hear me well, folks. It turned out that God was enough. Now the question I pose today, where are your and my eyes are, huh? Right. Where are our eyes today? Yeah. Now, yeah. I hope all of us can say, preacher, my eyes are where they need to be. Right. I hope you're telling the truth, okay? Yeah. Our eyes should be where the psalmist says his eyes were. Y'all remember what David said in Psalm 121? He said, I'll be what? I will lift up what? My eyes to the hills from which what? Come in my hair. My help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. God delivered the people, folk. The invading armies of Moab, Amon, Edomites, they got to quarreling among themselves. And God destroyed them without Jehoshaphat's army ever doing battle. Y'all see how God worked. God had them destroyed, my friend. Made them start fight against one another. Lord help me. And they didn't have to do no fighting. Because God allowed them to fight amongst themselves, which gave Judah the victory. Do we ever have time when we do not know what to do? Come on, somebody. Y'all know we do. Okay? Jehoshaphat's prayer gives us some direction on what to do when we don't know what to do. And the first thing we need to do when we don't know what to do, is we can appraise our adversaries. Don't forget that. We can appraise our adversaries. Secondly, we can analyze our resources. Analyze our resources. And then thirdly, we can accept 
our deliverance. My Accept God. our deliverance. Now look again. We can praise our adversary. Now we can ask ourselves, is my fear real or imagined? My, Lord. my fear. My Lord. Is it real or am I just imagining things? Someone has said that only 8% of our fears are legitimate. Y'all get that? 20% of our fears are over past decisions that cannot be altered. Something that's already gone on. We still fear it. And then 12% are over criticism, most of which are untrue. All right? 40% my friend, are uh, over events that will never occur. 10% concern health. And 10% are just trivial. That if things of little value or no importance. Again, on that 8%, again, of the fears that we face are legitimate. On that 8%. So do you see, my friend, what I see? that a lot of our fearing should not be feared. Okay? It's because we make things fearful and that are really not fearful. Now, now, Jehoshaphat had a bad reason. We're going to see more as, as we dig into the message today. But he understood what he had to do. And that's what we have to do. Look again, my friend. He recognized, he appraised his adversary. Now, we should have a knowledge of what is transpiring which will help our cause. In your fear, we should have a knowledge of what is transpiring. Now, and then knowing what is happening, may we not enable ourselves to change it, but at least know that we are aware of it. You are aware of what's going on. Jehoshaphat and his people, they took a realistic look at what was happening. You know, they weren't imagining this. That was real. Those Ammonites, those Moabites, those Elamites, they were real folk. And in praising their adversaries, they had real concern. And sometimes we have cause for concern too. But not every time. Y'all get that? Not every time. Many times we magnify our fears and inflate our adversary's power entirely out of proportion. In other words, you ought to be able to say, he may be my adversary, she may be, but they can't do nothing unless God allows them to do it. And then if he allowed them to do it, he's going to give you the power and the strength to go through it. Okay? When we, when we don't know what to do, let's start by putting the facts into perspective. Y'all get it. Put the facts where they're supposed to be. Now, I didn't say it was fictitious. I said the facts. The facts of what they are. And then, moving on, secondly, what to do when we don't know what to do is we can analyze our resources. You know, analyze the resources. Now, after praising their adversaries, Jehoshaphat and the Judeans, they analyzed their resources. They did not have a greater number of troops of superior weapons, but they did have God. Yeah. Y'all get that? It's almost like the nation Israel. They're fighting against what we would call some bad dudes over there in the Middle East. But what's going to help them and what has helped them through the centuries is that they have God. My friend, when attempting any work or any kind of ministry for the Lord, it is useless to catalog what we do not have. What we do not have. Many people are quick to ascertain what we do not have to meet a situation. One more time. Many people are quick to ascertain what we do not having to meet the situation to cope with the circumstance or to perform a work. In other words, just eyeball. Just eye in the situation. But we've got to put the eye on the real eye who sees all of our eyes and know that he will see us through. Now Moses Moses did this when God called him for 
from the burning bush to deliver his people from Egyptian slavery. Now notice what Moses pointed out all that he did not have. Do y'all know that's what he did? He pointed out all that he did not have, but God reminded him who did have him. And that was God himself. Remember, he said, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh? Yes. And God said, certainly, I will be with you. Y'all get that? Yes. Then Moses said, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and said the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say, what is his name? Okay. And God said, to Moses, I am that I am. And I need you to just say unto them, I am has sent me, Lord have mercy, unto you. If that anyone's name you know greater than the I am, uh, nobody is greater. Nobody is greater. Do we need to be reminded of who we have, my friend? I believe we do. Else in case you don't know who you have, and sometimes I may feel like I don't know who I have. God still wants to tell us, as I was with Abraham on Mount Moriah, I am with you. I am your Jehovah Jireh. I'm your Jehovah Jireh. And we do know Jehovah Jireh merely means that the Lord will what? He will provide. Not only was God saying, I'm your Jehovah Jireh, but I'm your Jehovah Nisi. I am your banner. I am Jehovah Shema. That is, I am there. The Lord is there. Now, when no one else is there, you can always count on him being there. I hope you get what I'm saying. He will always be there, folks. And that is, he's the Lord of hosts. That really means he's our almighty, sovereign God that no one can lay a hand on. Lord, have mercy. And then, my friend, he is the Lord God of Israel. Now, Israel, as we know, are the Lord's chosen people. He showed that when he called Abram out of Ur the Chaldees, my friend, to go into the land that he would show him. It is said long years ago at the film service of Louis XIV, the king of France, that the great cathedral was packed, Lord have mercy, with mourners from all walks of life, and they had come to pay tribute to their king. To them, he had been a great ruler. The room was dark. Only one candle illuminated the massive gold casket that he was lying in. It had been light to symbolize the greatness of the king. Massilion, the country preacher or the court preacher, he stood, my friend, to speak. And behind the pulpit, he reached across the pulpit and he snuffed out. And he put out the candle that they had lit, my friend, to symbolize the greatness of King the 14th. But my friend, then from the darkness, after things got dark and after he put out the candle, he spoke just four words. God only is great. Okay. Do we get that? Yeah. God only is great. I am minute. You are minute. He is great. Huh? Who are you? Who am I? We are nothing without him. God is still great today. And he is all that we need. And may we never forget that he is all that we need. And then third, what do we do when we don't know what to do if we can accept our deliverance? Now, accept the, your deliverance. Accept my deliverance. Now, Judah chose to turn to God for deliverance. 
and so must we. We can turn to God and worship. I hope you came to worship. You see, he turned to God and worship. Look what King Jehoshaphat, he called the people to worship. In fact, on down there the text, notice he said, and all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Where are the wives? Where are the children? Where are the husbands or the fathers, huh? Where are they? We all should be together so we can carry on the work. And this brother called for him. He didn't say, bring one of your children and leave the rest of them home. Right. Amen. He didn't give no certain number. He said, bring them. That means bring all of them. All right. Bring all of your children. Bring the wives. Lord have mercy. My friend, he was calling for worship. And that's what we want to do. You know, when something is good to you, you want somebody else to join in with you. Am I right there? You see, we can see the face of God, my friend, and then the face of our troubles does not room quite so large when we can see the face of God. Somebody might be saying, preacher, you mean you've seen the face of God? This is good. No man. No sir. But spiritually, by faith, I've seen him. And I hope and pray today that you can say that I've seen him also. Because I know I can feel it in my hand. Feel it in my feet. I can feel it all over me. And that lets us know that he's right there. My friend, can you understand tonight, or today rather, that nothing would have happened in biblical times with those great men and women of old had they not seen the Lord? See, they saw him, folks. In fact, if you read the 11th chapter of Hebrews, it talks about how Moses saw him who is invisible. You can't see him with the natural eye, but you ought to know that there is a God somewhere. Amen. We didn't come here to worship myself. We didn't come here to worship the choir, the deacons of no one. We came to worship God. And he is the one that we ought to turn to, my friend, in times like these. We can also turn to God with his promises. Now, we turn to him and worship, but turn to him with his promises. Look at the promise from God that's found in 2 Chronicles 15 to 17. He said, hearken ye again, all Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid. Now this made by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. Amen. But God, tomorrow, he said, go ye down against them. Y'all get that? God said, you do your part. And God knows I'm going to do my part. He said, behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, okay, that you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Do y'all get that? Uh, you don't need to fight. Don't say, I'll can, I can take care of this, my Lord. No, don't, don't take care of him. Amen. Let him have all the fights. Do y'all get what I'm saying? How many of us ought to say it out hard? I'm not going to tell you to raise your hand because some of y'all might be fighting before the night is open. But I'm going to try to get you to see and for me to see that if there's a fight, we're going to let who fight for us? Let God fight. And he knows just what he hit him at. Y'all get it? Sometimes you may swing and you might miss, but, but he's not going to miss. You want, you want to stay with him, my friend, who is the, the big talk. He has always been victorious. He has a promise to help us in our time of trouble, and we can lay hold to that promise. And then, my dear folk, we can turn to God with confidence. Now, the Judeans were able to express complete confidence in God, with confidence in God. And in his word, we can meet in a crisis. And that's why it's important that we get the word down in us. See, when the folks say something to you that's contrary to what God says, 
you tell them what God said and you can stand on that. Huh? Amen. And that's going to stand up anywhere, folk. I don't care what or who it might be, they cannot outdo the Almighty God. Often we do not know, my friend, just what to do because we're depending on ourselves to know what to do. But we don't know, we think we know, but King Jehoshaphat's people express confidence in the promise they have received from God. Uh -huh. My friend, God, I tell you this morning, we too can rely on God and in a crisis of our lives. Yes, my friend, it may be wife, it may be husband. It may be children, it may be supervisor, employee, but God said, you can rely on me. Don't depend on no one but me. Because he says it emphatically and dogmatically when he says, if God be for us, who can be against us? And I want us to get in our mind today, write down who you believe that can be against you. Right now, all the names of the folk you believe that are against you. It may be your husband, write a name down. Right. It may be your wife, write a name down. Right. If it's your children, write their name down. Even if it's the old pastor, the deacon, or whomever, just write all their names down. And I want to tell you that one more time, God says, if I be for you. Y'all gonna write the name, but y'all know better, huh? Can you say, I know better, preacher, but I can't write down nobody, huh? Who can be against me if you are for me? And my friend God has shown himself throughout biblical times that if he is for someone, who can be against them? In fact, I'm sure Jehoshaphat can remember how God was with Israel when she came out of the promised land. And even before she came out of the promised land, God had to teach Pharaoh that he was for his people. And Lord have mercy, getting rid of the firstborn down in the land of Egypt. And then children, they marched out and they got over my friend in the wilderness and Pharaoh's army was coming behind them and, and we know, my friend, that God was for them because he parted the Red Sea and allowed them to come over on dry ground. Everywhere else you look at God, he has proven himself over and over again. Thank you. 
may we put our trust in the Lord today. Is there one here today that have made up your mind and said, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. I found out that him on my side that everything is going to work out fine. I found out that through all of my ups and downs, my trials, my tribulations, that God has stood by my side. Our Father, how we thank you for this great day that you've given unto us. How we thank you, dear God, for each and every one under the sound of my voice. And how we thank you, God, that you're still doing for us what no one else can do. We pray for each of us, God, that we will strive to be the best that we can while we can. To love you more, God, than we've ever loved you before. Because we know we cannot love you. But God, we can certainly do all that we can while we can to demonstrate I love to you this every day. God have mercy on all the sick of this church. Namely, dear God, Minister uh, Byron Perkins. And, and God, I know he's in your hand. The doctors don't know God, but you know. Because you are the doctor of all doctors. Lord have mercy upon him and grant him the strength that he needs to know that the Lord will make a way somehow. And not only him, but all of our elderly sisters and brothers of this church, that may they all know that God still sits on the throne. The prayer still changes things. Look on Sister Jackie and the family, the poor family, and the loss of our brother. God, who fought the battle for a number of years, but God, he saw fit to say he has fought enough, but you take him on in, and not only him but others that have gone on, may, may we all know, God, that our time is winding up, and we don't know the day or the hour that you will call us in, but may we say in that day, as the great apostle Paul said, that I fought the fight, I finished my course, I've kept the faith, and this for that laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all those that love his appearing. Bless us, my Father, grant to us all your traveling grace this day, arrive in mercy, in Jesus' name, we tell you, thank you now, amen, amen, amen. Now may the Lord watch over us and keep us as we leave this place. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And we'll look to hear from you. Lord have mercy. We move on in our worship and know that God is still doing for us what no one else can do. And we commemorate his suffering and his death on Calvary. Amen. The Bible tells us on the night in which our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed that he did take the bread and when he had broken it, he said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same thou also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament. Drank ye all of it. For as often as we eat and drink, we do show the Lord's suffering and death till he come again. Our Father, again, the extension of our praying to you today, we ask your blessings upon this bread that represents your broken body, the fruit of the vine of your God that represents your shedded blood. Oh God, do sanctify both of them. Cleanse them by your word. And may each of us, before partaking, have a self-examination. Know beyond a shadow of doubt, God, how we stand with you. And if there's something in our lives that are not like you, and that we know that is not pleasing you, 
may we confess it before the God Almighty. God, because you said if we confess our sin that you're faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for all that we'll partake this day. In Jesus' name, we thank you now, God. Amen, amen. On that night in which our Lord was betrayed, the Bible said he took the bread, and when he had broken it, he said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And they all began to eat. After the same manner, my dear folk, after eating of the bread, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament. Thank you all of it. And they all began to drink. And as often as we eat and drink, we do show the Lord's suffering and death. 